when the iconic chandeliers rise at the Metropolitan Opera, audiences know they are in for something special. We hope that with every production we put on our stage, we are bringing together the finest performers and the finest creative people to present works that will please the widest possible public. What might be surprising for people who don't know the Met as intimately as I do is the extent of the activities that are going on inside the Opera House to prepare the first week of the season. There are rehearsals taking place for each of the four operas that are opening in different rooms and different spaces. This is uh, the most intense theatrical operation in the world. The Metropolitan Opera kicked off its 134th season with a production of Samson and Delilah. The cast is led by mezzo-soprano Elena Garancha and tenor Roberto Alagna. What can the audience expect from this production of Samson and Delilah? I think an incredible stage set, costumes, as you can see. Um, great singers. Mm -hmm. I think a great chemistry between the artists on the stage and wonderful music, um, historic story that's told, I think, in very, very realistic feelings of nowadays. And I think they want to dream and to forget all the problems they have in life, in real life. This is our mission. The first week also includes productions of Aida, Puccini's La Fanciulla del West, or Girl of the Golden West, and a revival of Puccini's classic La Boheme starring married couple Nicole Carr and Etienne Dupuy in their Metropolitan Opera debuts. As a married couple, does that make it easier doing it together? Oh, that's a good question. I think so. I yeah. mean, Etienne is a great set of ears, and so I know that when I'm singing, he's, he's listening, and so if there's something that's going wrong or right he'll he'll be able to let me know and you know it's fun well, she's to look a great set of chords so it's easy, it's easy <laughs> on the ears no but it, it's nice to be able to look across the stage and see a really friendly face that you know well and trust well, it does make it easier grand opera can have casts of hundreds of people and even some animals but there are over 3,000 people working in the metropolitan opera on a daily basis from the costume department to the front of house to set building this all looks like organized chaos. Is this organized chaos? That's a generous way of putting it, yes. David Feely is the Met's technical director. He walked me through the very busy and noisy backstage area as they prepared for opening week. What is the greatest challenge working with so many different productions here? Um, probably the, the, uh, the storage and the logistics. Uh, for us, it's, it's all about big scenery, grand opera. It's a huge amount of stuff to move and, and things to organize. Our big push this morning is to get Samson on stage ready for rehearsal. Today we're going to be rehearsing Act 1 and Act 3. So we're setting Act 1. Most of what you're looking at from the back here is bits of Act 3. And what do we have rolling by here? <laughs> These are the hands uh, for the man. You can see two halves of the man up on stage. I see you have Samson up right. front here. What do we have over here? So uh, back here we have a whole bunch of shows. In the back corner here are uh, bits of Act 3 of uh, Bohem. Um, in the opposite corner, uh, we've got bits of Aida. Uh, right in front of us are bits of Fanchula and bits of stock that are headed back downstairs. Um, so we just pack things into every corner we can. So in this room right now, we have about six different operas being worked on. Tara Willis runs the wig and makeup department. So this is actually a wig that's going into our current production. And of course, if you know the story of Samson and Delilah, he gets his hair cut off, right? He loses his strength. And for this final act, um, you know, he gets tortured. Um, the story is he gets his eyes gouged out and they cut his hair really short. How important is the wig department to the production? For me, coming from this world, it is sort of uh, 
the cherry on top. You know, you can walk out in a full costume on a beautiful set, but if you don't have the hair and the makeup that goes with it, it doesn't really sell it. The moment that a singer or an actor puts that wig on for the first time, you really see the change in them happen. That's when you really see their character come to life. And all of this hard work and labor doesn't come cheap. The Met is not only uh, the biggest opera house in the world, it's the most expensive. The overall budget of the Met is about $300 million a year. The individual costs of a production vary. Typically a new production is more expensive. A new production might cost anywhere from two to four million dollars for the physical sets and costumes. A revival is less expensive because we've already done it before. Uh, it might be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> I'm looking around and I'm thinking, wow, I'm standing on the stage. The main stage of the Metropolitan Opera, for you, do you get that feeling? Oh yeah, every day, every day. You have the best of the best working at the Met and when it all comes together, you really get to hear it and you see it. The team, you know, who works here, be it stage directors, be it costume makers, being designers, you know, everybody, it's something very, very special. And I think every singer dreams at least once in their career to have a possibility to sing in Metropolitan and Opera. I, I must say the, the, the audience here is very special, very, they are very kind. And when they love somebody, they show to the singers and uh, we appreciate that a lot.